Let's talk about some potential trade targets for the Chiefs prior to the NFL trade deadline, the very quick return of Justin Watson, the successful wrist surgery of Nick Bolton, as well as the continued unfortunate series of events for Justin Ross, who was just placed on the commissioner's exempt list today and will not be able to play in the game against Denver and may not be playing football for quite some time. So let's talk about it. But first, how about those? First up, I gotta let you guys know that Chiefs Bids is back with another partnered giveaway of this signed Felix and UDK Uzama helmet, but more on how you could potentially win that in a bit because we gotta talk about the Chiefs playing the Broncos at Mile High Stadium this Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time in a game that is going to be freezing. I don't know why I said it like that, but the low is 11 degrees with a kickoff temperature of 28. On top of that, there's also a 70% chance of snow. So this game is gonna be an interesting one depending on the weather. Special teams coordinator Dave Tobe said the altitude of Mile High Stadium will help get the ball up into the air, but he's telling his players that the cold weather is basically going to negate any benefits they'd normally get from the elevation. Tobe is also happy with McCall Hardman being out there as the returner, though he noted Hardman is a bit rusty from not doing it for a while, so they'll keep working away at it, though we all know the one return McCall did have against uh, the Chargers was absolutely incredible. Tobe also noted that with Nick Bolton out due to injury, they're going to have to bring up another linebacker or safety to help with special teams. He's talking about from the practice squad because it was Drew Tranquil helping out on teams, but now that Bolton's out, Drew will be helping to head up the defense. And since I've already started down this trail, I wanna get into the final Chiefs and Broncos injury report for the Chiefs. Nick Bolton is the only player out with Andy Reid noting today that Bolton is back in town and recovering well. Pete Sweeney of Arrowhead Pride said that Bolton will probably be placed on IR this Saturday, which makes sense considering he's gonna be out for at least six weeks. And once he is put on IR, he will no longer be popping up on the injury report. And other than Nick Bolton, though, everybody else fully participated on Friday and have no game designations, meaning they will suit up and play. One player to watch out for, though, is running back Jarek McKinnon, who popped up on the injury report this week with a groin issue and didn't participate Thursday. So I'll be curious to see if he plays his normal amount of snaps or he's a bit limited in the game against the Broncos. Then kicker Harrison Butker did miss practice Thursday due to an illness, but was a full go Friday and will be out there kicking Sunday. And finally, wide receiver Justin Watson is looking likely to play in Sunday's game, which is good news, especially considering they now have another wide receiver out and no longer on the roster. More on that in a bit, but Andy Reid said Watson should play. Then he mentioned that wide receiver Richie James is close to coming back from IR, which is some good news there on the wide receiver front. However, Richie was initially slated to be the team's returner prior to getting injured. And now that McCall Hardman is here doing that, I'll be interested to see how that all plays out upon his return. And for the Broncos, safety Kareem Jackson was recently suspended a couple of games and therefore he will be out against the Chiefs. But as far as injuries go, everybody on the Broncos injury report fully participated Friday and will be good to go. Aside from wide receiver Brandon Johnson, who is listed as questionable due to a hamstring issue that popped up this week at practice. And from here, I want to do a short Chiefs and Broncos preview, then dive into the most updated situation regarding wide receiver Justin Ross, who was just placed on the commissioner's exempt list today, as well as look at some potential wide receiver trade targets prior to the NFL trade deadline. But first, I gotta let you know that Chiefs Bids is back with another sponsored giveaway featuring this full-size helmet signed by none other than the Chiefs' first round draft pick, Felix and Udike Uzama. He also put the letters HBTC on there as a nod to the community, which is pretty freaking awesome. More on how to win this in a moment, but in case you didn't know, Chiefs Bids is accessible through the official Chiefs app. Just click more at the bottom, then bids, and you will then see all kinds of signed Chiefs memorabilia that's updated all the time to be auctioned off featuring former and current players, game-worn items, and even mystery boxes that might include a golden ticket to even more signed pieces. So make sure to check out that app as soon as possible. And as far as how to win this signed FAU helmet, you'll need to head over to Chiefs Bids private Facebook page. A link is in the description. Join the group, wait for approval if you haven't already, then comment HBT Chiefs on their featured giveaway post that you'll find pinned to the top of the group right here in the featured section. And I'll be announcing the winner this Monday, October 30th, using a random comment picker. And you'll know if you win because I will reply to your comment on that post. So make sure to head on over to the Chiefs Bids private Facebook page as soon as you're done watching this video and comment HBT Chiefs on the featured post for your chance to win that FAU helmet. All right, as far as a game preview goes for the Chiefs and Broncos, I'm gonna keep it short because both teams played each other like two weeks ago. Obviously, uh, the defense now has Charles Minnehue. They didn't in their first matchup 
matchup, uh, which makes for an even bigger problem for Denver's offensive line, who allowed Russell Wilson to get sacked four times in the previous matchup. I do anticipate they get to Russell Wilson at least three to five times in this game, if not more. And on the subject of the D-line, did you know George Karloftis leads all NFL players in batted passes since the beginning of the 2022 season 10 times? causing an incompletion. And these batted down passes don't stop with Carl Loftus either because right now the Chiefs lead the league in passes batted down this season, which includes linebackers and the entire D-line with 13 total. Carl Loftus also has three and a half sacks on the season. Mike Dana, who's playing incredible, has four and a half, which is only one sack behind Chris Jones, who has five and a half. So good luck with that, Broncos. Then the secondary is playing so well with Chief Safety Mike Edwards having the lowest passer rating allowed of all safeties who have faced a minimum of 10 targets with a 7.0 rating allowed. Then Legereus Sneed has allowed the eighth lowest passer rating of all cornerbacks that have faced at least 20 targets. Trey McDuffie is also playing incredible, as is Justin read. And I think if the Chiefs can limit the Broncos run game a bit more, they rushed for 115 yards against KC two weeks ago and then for over 150 yards last week against the Packers, uh, as well as contain Cortland Sutton, who caught Denver's only TD pass last matchup. Things should be good to go on that side of the ball, considering the Chiefs are only allowing 15 points per game on average, which is the second best in the league of any other defense. And as far as the Chiefs offense is concerned, they just simply need to score touchdowns in the red zone this time. They were one in five five within the 20 yard line in their first matchup. And had they scored touchdowns on just three of those five red zone trips, the score would have been something like 27 to eight, which is basically a blowout. I would think the Broncos try to limit Travis Kelsey a bit, but good luck with that, especially considering he caught nine passes for 124 yards two weeks ago. Uh, but nobody can really stop that guy. He went off against the Chargers and it's insane. They also can't sleep on Rasheed Rice though, who caught four passes for 70 yards in that game. And on top of that, McCole Hardman is also here now and was not two weeks ago, so that's a new wrinkle for Denver to have to worry about. Outside of that, I just want to see Pacheco get involved in the run game again. Uh, he carried the ball 16 times for 62 yards and also caught six passes for 36 yards in week six's matchup. And if they do that and also keep Mahomes protected, who was sacked twice against the Broncos in week six, I think the Chiefs are winning this game by a score of 27 to 13 Please happen like that, beating the Broncos for the 17th time in a row. Though, of course, uh, the Chiefs need to come in, play a clean game, eliminate turnovers, and actually score in the red zone because this is a divisional game after all, and these games can get weird quickly. All right, next up is the big topic of the day, and that is involving wide receiver Justin Ross, who honestly has been the big topic of discussion all week after he was arrested on Monday and charged with two misdemeanors, domestic battery and criminal damage to property of less than $1,000, both of which he pled not guilty to the very next day at his initial court date and has another one scheduled currently for December 4th, I think it is. For more info on his situation, his arrest and all that, watch this video here where I do a deep dive into what's going on. Anyway, after pleading not guilty, Ross was back at practice with the team Wednesday and Thursday with Andy Reid saying Justin Ross is back while the team has ongoing discussions with law enforcement and that part of it, listening to the real details of what went on from there. They're going to keep open communication with Brett Veach himself, as well as the uh, people in the building that deal with the law enforcement. Then they would make their final decision from there. Well, they didn't have to get that far because today it was announced by basically every NFL insider at the same exact time that the NFL placed Justin Ross on the commissioner's exempt list following his legal incident earlier this week. And in case you've never heard of the commissioner's exempt list, it's one that players can get placed on when dealing with off the field situations like Ross or others in the past, uh, Ben Roethlisberger and Dominic Sue, Adrian Peterson, Kareem Hunt, and many others. And this allows teams to put players on it who have been declared by the commissioner to be temporarily exempt from counting within the active list limit, which means during this time, Justin Ross isn't currently taking up a roster spot and is basically on paid leave. He's also not allowed to practice, not allowed to play in games or even attend games as long as he remains on this list. However, Ross can still be present at the facility for meetings, individual workouts, and receive treatment from the Chiefs trainers if needed during this time. It's also worth noting that the commissioner 
Skinner is the only one who is able to decide who is on this list. The Chiefs have no say on Ross getting placed on it and have no idea when Ross will be able to return because the commissioner has all the power on when he can even be removed from the list. And Andy Reid confirmed as much in his presser today saying that he doesn't know when Justin Ross will be back at this point in time. Quote, we'll just let it play out the way it goes. That's what this list is for until all the information is gathered. Big Red also said that Veach had a convo with the league about it and they are currently letting everything play out right now. And honestly, that is all the Chiefs can really do. Just let it play out, especially considering, again, the fact that the commissioner also has the complete controlling power to decide in advance whether a player's time on the exempt list will be indefinite or will continue until they deem the proper amount of time on said list suffices, allowing the player to be lifted and returned to the active list. And while the Chiefs don't have any say in the situation regarding the list, they do have one thing they could do, I guess, if they wanted, and that is release Justin Ross. Now, I'm not saying they will, but it can't be ruled out at this point in time. It's similar to what happened with running back Kareem Hunt back in 2019. Not the situation, but Hunt was placed on the commissioner's exempt list after the surveillance video surfaced of his altercation. Then according to Matt Derrick of Chiefs Digest, the Chiefs released Hunt shortly after he was placed on the list. Now, if the Chiefs decided to release Justin Ross, I believe the team would no longer be required to pay him while he remains on that list, though I've seen some say he could still get paid while others say they don't think so. I mean, if the Chiefs were to release him while not on the list, they would owe him nothing because his current contract comes with no guarantees. But since he's on the exempt list, which is like paid leave, it's hard to know for sure as I couldn't find anything concrete when digging for an answer. Now, even if the Chiefs could get off the hook of paying Ross by releasing him while on the exempt list, I do not think that's why they would do so. They wouldn't really save that much money at the end of the day based on his contract. And that's why I think if they do end up releasing him sooner rather than later, it would probably be based on finding out more details around the situation and then deciding it's best to simply cut ties and move on. Either way, we will have to wait and see if the Chiefs stick by him during this time of the legal process playing out and him uh, being on the commissioner's exempt list or if they decide to move on. Now, I do wanna talk about the reaction to this Justin Ross news around social media because of course, it was a mixed bag. Carrington Harrison of 610 Sports said these types of situations are the literal purpose of the list, especially based on what he's been accused of allegedly doing. Seth Kaiser, a lawyer by profession, said it's perfectly reasonable for an employer to take action while the legal system runs its course. It happens all the time, to be honest. People get put on leave for allegations of violating workplace conduct frequently and usually well before the system has done its thing. However, some were confused why some players that have gone through similar legal issues were not placed on the commissioner's exempt list immediately and were allowed to keep playing. Two examples right off the top are actually two Chiefs players, Willie Gay Jr. and Charles Aminahue, even though Charles Aminahue was a 49er at the time. And while each situation is uniquely their own and not an exact match to Ross's by any means, uh, both Willie Gay and Charles Aminahue were allowed to continue practicing and playing with their teams in the playoffs without being placed on the commissioner's exempt list. So people are wondering why it's happening to Ross basically immediately, uh, which is a fair question to ask in my opinion. I would be curious to see why the league wanted to act so quickly, though I personally don't have any issue with Justin actually being placed on this list. And now that Justin is on the list for who knows how long, could the Chiefs try to make a move for another receiver before the trade deadline on Tuesday? Well, my current thoughts are, I doubt it, but you never know. Currently, the Chiefs have Rasheed Rice, who's balling out, MVS, who came back to life last game, and hopefully it stays that way, Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Justin Watson and the newly traded for Mecole Hardman. So that is six with the biggest question mark to me right now being Justin Watson and the health of his elbow. The Chiefs initially said he'd miss around three weeks, but only missed one before being slated to play this upcoming Sunday against the Broncos. So I would assume since he is playing, the Chiefs medical staff think he's good to go. On top of that, Richie James is coming back soon-ish from IR per the words of Andy Reid earlier today in his presser. And that would make Richie James wide receiver seven with Justin Ross out on the exempt list. They also currently have three receivers that are on the practice squad they could sign to the roster or elevate for game day in the meantime, especially with Ross out and Richie still on IR, with those being Chase Cota, Cornell Powell, and Montrell Washington, with Cornell Powell, for what this is worth, being the most solid of those three from an offensive production standpoint, just purely based on the fact that Powell has been in the system for a few years now. But 
None of them really move the needle, if we're gonna be honest. Sure, they could also trade for someone before the deadline, but they only have around $3.8 million in cap space currently. Adam Thielen is an intriguing name to me as a guy to use the rest of the season. And per Chris Clark of Chiefs Corner, Thielen would only cost the Chiefs around a million dollars for the rest of 2023, but his 2024 cap hit is definitely higher and Thielen would then be 34 years old. Some are still calling for a DeAndre Hopkins trade and Chris Clark noted that the Chiefs could get him for just under a million dollars this season. Season, but on the fifth day of the new league year, I believe in 2024, he's due like $12 million. So I guess the Chiefs could trade him and use him this season. Then if they wanted to cut him before that day of the new league year, then there's also Traylon Burks from the Titans, who's still on his rookie deal, or even receivers like Jerry Judy of the Broncos or Darnell Mooney of the Bears, who are both also still on rookie deals, I believe. But anyway, you look at it, uh, the Chiefs would need to be okay with giving up draft capital and then dealing with that player's salary, whether they are still on their rookie deal, which which could be easier or a vet that they can cut after this season. And even if they can make it fit within the team's limited cap space and be willing to give up draft capital, uh, the receiver would also need to get here and learn the system as soon as possible and still probably wouldn't get solid usage for weeks after that, maybe not even until the end of the season. But hey, since we're talking about it, who would you like to see the Chiefs potentially trade for by Tuesday's deadline? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.